welcome back, pro wrestling fans. Welcome back, IWC. It's me. It's me. It's the GOC. And I'll say that to say this, because I tell it like it is. Coming to you live to tape, 25 feet below the surface of the earth, here at Chaos Corner for another edition of this date today in pro wrestling history for November 2nd. Greetings and salutations to everyone out there. Hit that like button, subscribe, leave a comment, email me, inbox me. Let's have some fun today. I have a big show in line for you guys. I can't thank you enough for being here. Much love and respect. This is, as I always say, my stress reliever. This is my levity. This is my love and my passion. A much needed distraction. And I'm hoping that I can bring that to you the fans. We're coming up on 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch hours where we can go live. Is it a live to tape? Wait, 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 wait. I'm live. I'm taping it at the same time. Ah, fuck it. You guys get the idea. I'm still a little under the weather, but feeling okay to be here for you, the fans. So bear with me uh, if you hear a coughing and sneezing and so on and so forth. Again, there's no green screen, there's no edit button. It's one man, unique, unedited, unscripted, raw dog for you, the fans. No Patreon, no paywalls, no Super Chats, Venmo, PayPal, Zelle, whatever it is that you use. Again, shout out, as I do every day, to our spiritual advisor, the big man, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's uh, stay aware situational awareness stay close to your family and friends keep your faith in this insane world of 2023 because we don't know what's going to happen and nothing is guaranteed especially tomorrow so grab a beverage grab a snack and enjoy this edition of chaos corner follow me on all social media platforms and you know what they are here on the mothership the Guardian of Chaos on YouTube. And of course, on X in real time, at Big Daddy GOC. And the GOC stands for The Guardian of Chaos. Follow me on Instagram, The Guardian of Chaos. Follow me on Facebook and my two accounts, J Brony, you get it, and Protigio Fidelis El Guardian. Follow me on Gitter, Gab, Truth Social, and soon to take over Rumble Live. Let's get right into it because I have a lot of news and notes and historical facts for today, November 2nd, this date in pro wrestling history. Again, bear with me, fans, bear with me. I know that you will. November 2nd, 1969, Carl Carlson and Tarzan Baxter defeat the medics number one and number two to win the tri-state wrestling united states tag team titles november 2nd 1974 today booker t's wife queen charmel turns 47 happy birthday queen send my regards to booker t my old buddy who appeared for us at Diesel Mania 2 uh, for Paradise Alley Pro Wrestling. Uh, one of the true legends and carpenters that gives back to this business. Still currently does a lot of the pay-per-views for WWE and ring announcing. And obviously has reality of wrestling down in Texas. And his own Hall of Fame podcast. Don't you dare miss it. November 2nd, 1984. Jim Crockett Promotions runs the Richmond Coliseum in Richmond, Virginia. On that card, Black Bart goes over on Tommy K. The American Starship defeat Paul Kelly and Jeff Sword. Now, for you fans out there, you historical buffs, the American Starship, Eagle and Coyote, was who? Hmm? Anyone? Bueller. Bueller. McFly. 
American Starship, Eagle and Coyote, a.k.a. Scott Hall and Danny Spivey. How about that for useless tidbits of information? On that same card, November 2nd, 1984 for Jim Crockett Promotions, Avalanche Buzz Tyler defeats the Russian bear Ivan Koloff. Wahoo McDaniel, Wahoo! And Tully Blanchard go over on Dirty Dick Slater and Brian Adidas. Who they call Brian Adidas. I, mean, I don't know, potato, potato, tomato, tomato. You know I say it all the time. The assassin, Joe Hamilton, over Paul Jones. Number one, Paul Jones. Ricky the Dragon Steamboat defeats the Mid-Atlantic champion, Ron Bass, via disqualification. And the NWA World Tag Team Champions, the American Dream, Dusty Rhodes, and the Raging Bull, Manny Fernandez, defeats the Zambui Express, consisting of Elijah Akeem and Kareem Muhammad. God bless you. Did somebody sneeze? It can't say, man, it's a work, man. Don't get offended. Don't be so sensitive. Back into the time machine. November 2nd, 1987. Harvindez Sihara, or Shira, a.k.a. Sarmir Singh in the World Wrestling Federation of the Bollywood Boys, was born on this date, November 2nd, 1987. November 2nd, 1992. Jerry the King Lawler defeats Todd Champion in Memphis, Tennessee for the USWA Unified Heavyweight title starting Lawler's 13th reign with that title. Talk about the king of Memphis. Talk about the king of Tennessee. Everyone says Elvis Presley. I'm a hunk of hunk of burning love. I said a hunk of hunk of burning love. I love Elvis, but Jerry the King Lawler was no joke as the King of Memphis. Back into the time machine. November 2nd, 1995. Smoky Mountain Wrestling at the Betsy Lane Kentucky High School with Jim Cornette. On that card, Robert Gibson pins Bobby Blaze. The dirty white boy Tony Anthony and Tracy Smothers beat the Headbangers via pinfall. Brad Armstrong beats Smoky Mountain Wrestling Heavyweight Champion Terry Bam Bam Gordy via disqualification. Buddy Landell goes over on Tommy Rich via disqualification, via disqualification, and then gets five minutes with Jim Cornette, which ends in a no contest, believe it or not. Corny, I can respect one of the few managers in the day who not only was a manager, but actually got in the fucking ring and took the bumps, a la Captain Lou or Bobby the Brain Heenan, like yours truly, the GOC. That's me. On that same card, Brad Armstrong wins the Battle Royal. Back into the time machine, November 2nd, 1996, ECW at the Middletown New York Fairgrounds Fieldhouse, uh, which I performed in as the NAWA commissioner back in 99 and 2000. 98, 99, 2000, somewhere around there. Let that marinate where I took over commissioner for the late, great, living legend, no pun intended, Bruno Sammartino. One of the biggest honors of my life where I went on to serve over 20 years as perhaps the world record holder for commissioner in a world of pro wrestling, independent uh, pro wrestling or otherwise. Here's the card. 1996, November 2nd. Louis Spicoli defeats Stevie Richards. Big Dick Dudley defeats the erotic experience in a handicap match. Two Cold Scorpio goes over on D.D. Taylor. Bubba Ray and Spike Dudley defeat Devon Dudley and Axel Rotten. Pitbull number two over primetime man from the dark side, Brian Lee. 
Mikey Whipwreck goes over on Raven. ECW TV champion Shane Douglas defeats Tommy Dreamer after interference from said Brian Lee. ECW World Heavyweight Champion The Sandman defeats Too Cold Scorpio. And the ECW Tag Team Champions, the Gangsters, New Jack and Mustafa, over the Eliminators of Cronus and Perry Saturn. Back into the time machine. November 2nd, 1998, born in New Orleans, Louisiana, PJ Hawks. Happy birthday, Hawks. Let's stay in 1998, November 2nd. Here we go. Houston, Texas is the place. Vince McMahon creates the WWF Hardcore Championship and awards it to Mankind, dude love McFoley, Cactus Jack, at the time he was Mankind. Now Foley, probably one of the original icons of hardcore wrestling, holds it for less than a month and never wins it back. In addition, on that night in 1998, November 2nd, Raw, Monday Night Raw, wins the Monday Night Wars by a rating of 4.8 to 4.1. Let those numbers sink in for a, a total of like eight and a half, nine altogether. And at that point, WWF never loses another week again to WCW in the Monday Night Wars after 83 weeks from WCW. Although I believe the previous week, Monday Night Raw also won in here in uh, 1998, if I have my facts correct, which you know that I do, and I do my due diligence. November 2nd, 1999, Mankind and Al Snow defeat Hardcore and Crash, Co Hardcore and Crash Holly for the World Wrestling Federation Tag Team Titles in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. November 2nd, 2000. The WWF releases the following in regards to the Owen Hart lawsuit. Now sit back and relax on this one because it's going to be an excellent listen and an excellent read here on Chaos Corner. A lot of news and notes, historical facts in this tragedy with Owen Hart. From Stanford, Connecticut, the New York Stock Exchange, the World Wrestling Federation, announces today, November 2nd, 2000, that it has agreed to a settlement in a previously disclosed lawsuit filed by members of the family of Owen Hart, whose accidental death occurred while performing under contract with the company. Under the terms of the agreement, the WWF will receive a full release from any further liability in the case. Let me quote Linda McMahon here now. It has always been our intention to settle this case, and we tried to do what we felt was in the best interest for all those involved, particularly, particularly for the family of Owen Hart says Linda McMahon, then CEO. As a result of the settlement, the WWF will take a charge of $7 million, which is net of its insurance recoveries. Let that sink in, let that marinate. And will retain the right to pursue contribution and indemnity from the companies that manufactured and sold the equipment involved in the accident. The charge will be recorded in selling general and administrative expenses for the quarter ending October 27, 2000. Now kick back and relax because we're just beginning on this tragic story. If you guys remember, again, this is 23 years ago that this was released. And of course, we know that it was 24 years ago that Owen Hart passed away in that tragic accident. And I'm going to cover that. That was the ending to one of the most tragic stories in the history of pro wrestling. 
Kansas City Circuit Judge Douglas Long Jr. approved the settlement and the family of Owen Hart received $18 million for the loss of Owen on the May 23rd, 1999 incident when his harness as the Blue Blazer at the Kemper Arena malfunctioned and he fell to his death during the Over the Edge pay-per-view, which I happened to be watching live and then rewatched it. And, you know, if you go back and you find out and you listen and you do your research and you do diligence like we do here on Chaos Corner, Jerry the King Lawler and JR were put in an unbelievable situation during that live event, as was everyone else. The WWF told stockholders that they would pay the $7 million of the payment and they wanted the rigging and harness companies to pay the other half. How about that if you were a stockholder at that point? You had nothing to do with it. How unfair was that? I guess that's the chance you take. One of the companies, Amspec Incorporated, filed for bankruptcy right before that judgment, possibly in anticipation of the judgment. Owen's wife, Martha, received $10 million. Their children, OG, at eight years old at the time, and Athena, five years old at the time, and I hope I got uh, his son's name correct, received $3 million each. Stu and Helen Hart, Owen's parents, each received $1 million. After the hearing, Martha took her children to the Kemper Arena to see where their father, Owen, died. I want you to think about that. I want you to sit back and let that marinate. Put that in your pipe and smoke it in this tragic historical event on May 23rd, 1999. And then the following uh, statements and, and lawsuits uh, that continued in the following year. Martha announced, announced that she was using two million of the money to start the Owen Hart Foundation to help the less fortunate, which we know currently today, uh, Tony Khan and AEW has taken over and helped out with the Owen Hart Foundation. And, and Martha is in good graces, obviously, with AEW to allow them to, to continue that. And they even had the Owen Hart tournament of these last couple of years. Perhaps the saddest part of the story is how the Hart family wants to be thought of as a tight-knit family was now in shambles. You remember, don't you? Uh, maybe those of you under 30 years old don't remember. Go back out and, and, and again with history. You can't get to where you are or where you want to go unless you respect the past and identify the people that have paved the way for you. Don't get stuck back there. As I always say on every show, look in the windshield, hit the gas pedal, full speed ahead. But that rear view mirror is there for a fucking reason. Okay? Remember that. I don't mean to cuss. Let's get on with the story here. Brett and Keith Hart sided with Martha, and I believe Stu and Helen as well, if I remember the story correctly. But the sisters... Diane and Ellie did not. And their respective husbands, if you know the connection of the legendary Hart family, Davy Boy Smith and Jim the Anvil Neidhart, went on to sign contracts with the WWF. After the incident, your thoughts? Leave a comment. Let me know what you think about this. Martha had some very stinging, and rightfully so, comments about the settlement that she released to the Calgary Sun newspaper at the time. And I want to get my facts straight here. Although I lived it in the current days of when it happened, I, I, you have to do your due diligence to make sure you get the facts straight. I want you guys to fact check me. What I do here is accurate. And I'll quote Martha Hart. This is not a close-knit family, and I'm not a part of it anymore. 
We carry the same last name, but that's as far as it goes. They, meaning the family, betrayed Owen by working against me and his children. And I will never consider myself or his and my children, I want heart, a part of that family anymore. I will respect Owen's parents and I will stay in touch with a select few of them. But people need to know that Owen was a white sheep in a black family. Quote, Martha Hart. I want you guys to think about that for a second. We're 20 minutes in here. Don't go anywhere. Let me get hydrated here. Compose myself. Look at the size of the proboscis on the GOC, huh? Wow. You could probably lift me up by my ankles and have me inhale. And, uh, you could use me as a vacuum cleaner. Or maybe if I tilt my head back, my nostrils look like a two-car garage. Well, look, come on, man. You've got to have a little perspective here, a little self-deprecation. Isn't that what it's all about? You've got to be able to make fun of yourself a little bit, especially after reading that story and reminiscing, I don't even want to use that word, looking back on what happened there in 1999. I was currently still very heavily involved in the pro wrestling industry at that point. And as a matter of fact, went on to work with Brett the Hitman Hart as commissioner for the NAWA and then went on to work and team with Jim the Anvil Neidhart for NEW. And in the hotel, as we were tilting a few back, the Anvil and I uh, had a brief conversation about it. That's what you get here on Chaos Corner with the GOC. Not only my over 50 years, 50 plus years as a fan, a scout, a historian, an agent, a smart, a mark. That's right. I say it every fucking program. A mark. And I'm proud of it. And my over three plus decades of being in this fucking industry. And again, I apologize. I use that word a lot and I don't mean it. And maybe my apologies mean nothing to you, but they mean something to me. I know what I'm talking about in this business. You want to know something, you come to someone who's been in the ring. With the legends, the heroes, the rookies, the young lions, the veterans, the Hall of Famers. I wasn't just a mouthpiece. I took the fucking bumps as well. Get a little carried away now. Stand by. Before we move on, you see I'm wearing my, speaking of history, my two. Thousand World Series sweatshirt between the Metropolitans and the Yankees, which unfortunately the Yankees uh, beat my New York Mets back then. But I figured I'd give a little homage, seeing that the Texas Rangers won the World Series last night here in 2023 over the Arizona Diamondbacks in uh, in five games. I was hoping for six or seven, but it was one heck of a World Series. So big homage and throwback here on this date in pro wrestling history. Thank you guys for bearing with me here. Again, uh, feeling a little bit better, taking my medication, my ibuprofen, my Aleve, whatever, uh, Mucinex for cough medicine and congestion and, you know, sneezing like, uh, like you wouldn't believe allergies acting up to. It's getting chilly here in the greater tri-state New England, the northeast area. In the shadows of Titan Towers, you sons of bitches. Not you, not you. Back into the time machine. November 2nd, 2004. Smackdown tapings in St. Louis, Missouri. Kurt Angle made a challenge to the current crop of WWE Tough Enough contestants. As we know, uh, Al Snow, now with OVW, running OVW there, uh, was one of the teachers there for Tough Enough at that point. I believe he even maybe built them up. Angle basically bullied and berated the contestants and ended up in a shoot-style matchup with uh, Tough Enough contestant Chris Naraki, if I said that correctly, easily taking him down for the pin. And uh, let's not forget... The shoot style he had with uh, student contestant Daniel Pewter, 
who actually came close to pinning or maybe even tapping out the legend, the legit badass Kurt Angle, if it wasn't for referee Hebner who came in for the the save there uh, for Kurt Angle, if you guys remember that, in 2004, November 2nd. This date today in pro wrestling history. Back into the time machine, November 2nd, 2007. Harry Smith, the aforementioned, uh, speaking of the hearts, Davy Boy's son, and Chris Masters were suspended by the WWE for its wellness policy violations. They were the first two workers under the revised provisions where violators' names would be released to the public. Masters, it was his second violation and Smith's first violation, would end up being released from the company. It's what happens when you don't do the right thing. I'm not here to preach or judge anybody. We all have our indiscretions. As long as you repent and learn from them, you're okay. Don't make the same mistakes. Don't let history repeat itself that way. November 2nd, 2007. WWE Hall of Famer Fabulous Moolah passes away in Columbia, South Carolina at the age of 84 from a heart attack. I uh, had the opportunity in the early 2000s to uh, be on a couple of events with Moolah and Mae Young uh, when they were tagging together and actually took my uh, youngest daughter and we went out to dinner with Moolah and Mae Young. We had quite the time, two impressive ladies for the day. Now remember something about Moolah, whatever the rumors are down at her camp or with the ladies, some for, some against, that's not my concern. Uh, uh, I don't have any knowledge of that and I want to speak on it. But Moolah held the WWF ladies title four times and at one reign for 28 years. Say what you want, from 1956 to 1984. Not only that, she was a five-time NWA Women's Champion. Inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame in 1995, and then posthumously into the, or posthumously, whatever you say, in the NWA in 2012. Rest in peace, Mula. You were kind to me and my daughter. Back into the time machine, November 2nd, 2009. The Chicago Tribune features an article on... Hulk Hogan, which includes a Hogan's, Hogan's claims that he tried to get into Metallica and the Rolling Stones, among other things. Now, we know Hogan changed the business, was a star in the late 70s, trained in Florida, Hiro Matsuda, uh, uh, Eddie Graham, they broke his leg, he was a bass player the whole nine yards. We know the history, he went on to blow up this business. Hulkamania, he did more for this business than perhaps anybody in the history of pro wrestling. I was a big say your prayer, take your vitamin. We know he's full of shit. And we know what he turned out to be. Perhaps a pathological liar, but I'm not judging him. I'm just stating the facts. Nothing that's on here that I present that is not out in the public that you can't get for your due diligence if you do your research. And here's what Hogan has to say in November 2nd amongst his many uh, claims in 2009, Hogan says his WWE Hall of Fame ring, which apparently he wore to cover up his ex-wife Linda's na uh, name that's tattooed on his finger, quote Hogan, I think Vince paid 20 bucks for it. My high school ring was better than this ring, you ingrateful son of a bitch. I'm just giving you the good, the bad, and the ugly. If you don't like it, change the fucking channel. Hogan claims, while in England presenting an award with Jerry Hall, Mick Jagger's ex-wife, she told them the Stones were looking for a bass player. Hogan sent her tons of merchandise that she apparently asked for and said, tell Mick I'm a great bass player. <laughs> Hogan says he never heard back. Oh, I'm not. Are you surprised, Hulk? And I know that you know, and I know that you're watching. You're watching. 
95% of you that watch this show are not subscribers because you're hiding. But I know who you are. Let's not forget about technology here in 2023. Hogan says he never heard back, obviously. Hogan also claims he sent a tape to Metallica, who I have some knowledge of because I happen to work personal security and event security for a few Metallica concerts uh, where the people were stacked up like 10 feet high. We almost got crushed along the stage while Metallica was performing and uh, perhaps the GOC saved uh, a handful of lives that night in the riot at Metallica when they were ripping out the seats. Let that marinate about my past. Go read the myth. Read my bio here on the Guardian of Chaos YouTube channel and you understand what I'm really all about and what I've done. I don't have to say it. I'm proud of my career. But they, uh, according to Hogan, uh, Metallica never uh, got back to him either. Geez, I wonder why, Hulkster. Hogan also claimed that Stone Cold Steve Austin was referring to him when he made this quote meaning Stone Cold. I'm not going to hang around and embarrass myself like some of these old guys. Stop thinking so much of yourself, Hogan. Listen, I love and respect you, dude, but the lies? Or, I don't know, maybe there is a degree of truth to them, but just like the one where you said you'd wrestled twice in the same day in Japan and the United States in less than 24 hours? I don't even know how that's possible. Amongst many other things, you know, whole Bubba the Love Sponge sex tape. I'm not here to judge you, Hogan. Stand by, fans. We're only a half an hour in. November 2nd, 2010. Back to the WWE in Stamford, Connecticut. And the McMahons. And the whole controversy, which I've been talking about for the last several days. In regards to Linda McMahon and her political aspiring or non-inspiring career. Linda McMahon lost her first attempt to become senator in the state of Connecticut. Vince, Stephanie, Shane, Triple H, and Marissa McMahon all joined forces with the former CEO, Linda, as she officially conceded the race for the state of Connecticut to Dick Blumenthal the liar here in Connecticut who's still in power here in the state of Connecticut the fraud stolen valor claiming about Vietnam and all his progressive liberal bullshit I don't want to talk about politics here I told you I try to keep religion and politics off this channel except briefly but we know what Blumenthal has turned out to be hey listen I voted for the man at one time but he turned out to be full of shit himself and they still keep electing him in this fucking state November 2nd, 2012, Enzo Amore officially signs with uh, WWE NXT, the roster, obviously. And we know what happened with Enzo and Big Cass and, uh, you know, everybody's S-A-W-F-T soft and you can't teach that. At least I cover my mouth. There's no cough button here or edit. We put it up raw dog. November 2nd, 2018. The WWE crown jewel in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Speaking of politics, the Middle East, and all the craziness that's going on right now. The millions of dollars that the WWE is making from Saudi Arabia. It is what it is. And seeing that crown jewel is coming up this weekend. How pertinent is this information? November 2nd, 2018 on this date in pro wrestling history. Brock Lesnar, the Beast Incarnate, won the Universal title vacated by Roman Reigns due to his battle with leukemia. Thank God he's recovered. By defeating Braun Strowman. On that same card, November 2nd, 2018, the crown jewel in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, Shawn Michaels, the heartburn kid, came out of retirement for his first match since 2010. 
as he teamed with Triple H to face The Undertaker in Kane, which is considered one of the worst matches of all time. Not just in Saudi Arabia, but of all time. The match was uh, beset with problems from the rip, from the muscle, if you will. As Triple H tore his tricep muscle in that bout early in the match, and Kane accidentally lost his mask and his wig, or the combination of the two. Go back and check it out. It's on YouTube. Now I'm going to flash back here because I stepped out of chronological order doing my two hours of research uh, for the show here today. Bear with me. November 2nd. 2001, as we go back into the time machine, Negro Casas and El Hijo del Santo. No, me jode, Marco, me mete culo, me dejo. I'm going to do a fence, man. It's K-Fame. It's a work. I'm only kidding. They defeat Los Guerreros, Ray Bacanero, and Ultimo Guerrero to win the CMLL World Tag Team titles. November 2nd, 2006, AJ Styles, the phenomenal one, Defeats Chris Saban. No, no, not talking Tommy Saban or the enforcer Kevin Saban from Paradise Alley Pro Wrestling. Big shout out to the Saban family. No relation. But Chris Saban loses to AJ Styles as Styles becomes the new TNA X Division champion in a fight for the right tournament match. And now we know Impact Wrestling is now tits and ass. Uh, total non stop action, excuse me. Uh, TNA Impact Wrestling now here in 2023. Trying to bring, bring back uh, the old brand? Uh, I don't know. Impact is okay, though. Don't underestimate Impact considering, considering the AEW shit storylines and the attendance and ratings and what's going on with AEW. Although I love the product at certain times. And what they're doing with MJF right now, if we are talking about current 2023, after watching uh, uh, Dynamite last night, uh, AEW Dynamite, it's all over the place. Teaming him up with the, with the acclaimed, and he gets it takes a clean pin against Bullet Club Gold, and and then Scissor Me Daddy asks, "What the fuck are you doing?" He's involved in ten different storylines that are nothing, and is she the only one in the company? What are you doing? Not to mention uh, TK bringing Ring of Honor on AEW uh, shows. What is going on? Here in 2023 with AEW and TK and the booking and the storylines. I, I, I'm just telling it like it is. It's just my opinion. You don't have to agree with it. Leave a comment. Back into the time machine, November 2nd, 2007. Los Guerreros de la Antalada. Let, let, let me say that again. Because I'm pretty good here with my uh, Espanol. Los Guerreros de la Atlantida, which is Atlantis and Ultimo Guerrero at uh, this point. Defeat Negro Costas and Mystico to win the CMLL Tag Team titles. So you see that from 2001, 2001 to 2007, CMLL and uh, the Los Guerreros. Back into the time machine, fans. November 2nd, 2009. Ozzy and Sharon Osbourne co-host Monday Night Raw. I am Iron Man. Perhaps one of the greatest entrance songs ever, of course, for the legendary, the late, great, Road Warriors, to me, the best tag team to ever step inside the squared circle, to ever walk the face of this fucking planet. And again, I know I keep saying I apologize. I, I do apologize. I, I mean that. Back into the time machine, fans. We're almost, we're almost ready to wrap it up here. We're coming up on 40 minutes. Thanks for staying here for the whole show because it's been one heck of a show today. I greatly appreciate it. Trust me when I tell you, it means a lot to me that you guys are here. You guys and gals. We got the analytics show coming up in State of the Channel soon. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. Go to the community page. We got a lot going on here. Coming up on two and a half thousand videos of my career and all the events I've been involved with and my special commentary matches and historical videos on this channel. 
You're not going to find it, too many channels like this, especially with my experience and who I am. I'm being humble, but I'm telling it like it is. Back into the time machine, November 2nd, 2007. The giant Bernard and Travis Tomko defeat Koji Kanamoto and Hiroshi Tanahashi for the New Japan Pro Wrestling G1 Climax Tag Team League. Konichiwa, bitches. Origato from Chaos Sign, the GOC Sign. November 2nd, 2012. And this one's a personal one uh, for me because uh, he works for my buddy Trooper Gilmore up in New World Wrestling Extreme. Jimmy Allen, a great independent promotion here in the New England area. And I happened to hang out with this man recently at the New England Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame induction ceremonies for the class of 2023. You know I was inducted uh, in the class of 2019. And then we hung out at the Fan Fest, Joe Bruins Fan Fest. So that's why uh, this is included. And plus it's on this date. November 2nd in history, 2012. In a nine-man elimination match, the Tokyo Monster, Cahagas, eliminates Damian Wayne to win the vacant NWA World Heavyweight Championship. Tokyo Cahagas is still active today. One heck of a grappler and athlete. And as I said, very close and good friends with Trooper Gilmore, the former NWA New England Heavyweight Champion, who now for the last uh, uh, over over almost two decades runs New World Wrestling Extreme in Rhode Island. An unbelievable organization. And Jimmy Allen, Trooper, is an unbelievable booker and promoter and owner of that company. Follow him on all social media platforms. Attend a show when you're out there. Trooper Gilmore, my old buddy, and my new buddy, Tokyo Monster Cahagas. Big shout out to you guys. I love you, brothers. I also want to give a... a a special shout out and a happy 73rd birthday to Michael Buffer. Let's get ready to rumble. Is there a trademark on that? I don't give a shit. And also, today, November 2nd, on this date in pro wrestling history, former AWA Southern Tag Team Champion Mike Davis, the late great Mike Davis, would have been 61 day. Fans, this was one heck of a show with a lot of great information, especially about uh, the tragic uh, history and story and death of Owen Hart. Rest in peace, Owen. Uh, I'll never forget the day that I had a chance to sit down backstage at a WWF event uh, and catering and, and, and talk to you and you were kind enough to talk to me. And let me pick your brain the same day I was uh, was able to talk with Mick Foley and would go on and be able to work with Mick and Jerry King Lawler when I was lucky enough with Slick Wagner Brown to be scouted by the WWF. So I'm very appreciative of that and your memory, Owen. And then being able to talk to your brother, Brett the Hitman Hart, and, and even your your uh, brother-in-law, uh, Jim DeAnvil Neidhart. And uh, I just have to say, rest in peace. Uh, from what I hear from my buddies uh, at Paradise Alley Pro Wrestling, Mario Mancini, uh, Paul Roma, Owen Hart, the Hart's just a tremendous family and a historical family here in the world of pro wrestling. Fans, we're wrapping it up for today on this date in pro wrestling history, November 2nd. Again, stay close to your family and friends. Stay aware in this insane world of 2023. Jesus Christ is coming back soon. Don't be caught dead without him. Walk in faith. And if he's for us, nobody else can be against us. I'll say that to say this. Because I tell it like it is. I'll be back tomorrow. Come on back. And don't you dare miss it.